but I believe there's a certain amount of theatricality that's grown up. There is an act, a Jethro Tull act as such. Is this well, something that just know, happens, or it's something that's planned? There are a lot of things in there, but I wouldn't say they were an act. They're, they're all, they all began as really improvised things. So they were not actually thought out, formalized, uh, theatrical, you know, attempts at combining media or anything like that. In the case of Thick as a Brick, it just started off from a one line, you know, which just made itself into... A, I mean, I just kept writing until I had a lot of music, you know, and that mm. was an album. Except that at one point, I scrapped half of it and rewrote it again in a couple of days, you know, because I just really wasn't too happy with the second... or the last... Uh, the last 18 minutes' worth of the, of the thing I wasn't really happy with, so I rewrote it in the concept, or concepts expressed in the music mm. or in the lyrics. Uh, is that it's it's everyone's right and the necessity I think uh, should be apparent for everyone to decide you know to make their own judgment on things in their own way regardless of age or experience or even intelligence you know I mean, mm. we have at one end of the of the scale of uh, uh, intellectual society we have people who are necessarily making judgments on people at the other end of, of the scale you know who may be as the, as the word suggests thick as a brick I mean your wise men don't know how it feels to be thick as a brick you know so mm -hmm. how, how the hell can they decide for the man in the street what he should want you know the, ne the next record will have um, a lot of elements of the theatre in it this is the passion play album is it yeah mm -hmm. but I mean that, that's something that I'm just writing now and uh, we won't start recording that for a couple of months yet. But that, that will involve a lot more than just music. But everything will be there. I can see two records away, you know, w where there will need to be some other people there, not as musicians, but as, uh, you know... Well, I, we shouldn't really get into that yet. Not really. I mean, it's, it's silly to talk about that, because you'll have weird and wonderful ideas of ballet dancers and uh, <laughs> I don't have ideas about that, things. you know, happening. Well, I have, you know, but I, I, it's to, to start talking about it in particularly, mm. you know, such a formal occasion when it's really only ideas, you know. I mean, I know, I know, I know what I want to do. Ian, when you're writing your music, seeing you, um, you feature principally in your flute playing, do you write it around your own flute playing? Do you write it for the group as a whole? Not really. I don't, I, don't, I don't write very much in terms of the flute at all. Um, no, really, I, I write by sitting down in, in uh, hotel bedrooms and just playing the guitar. But, but quite often, in the last year or so, I've, I've been writing without an instrument at all, just mm. in here. Uh, and not necessarily just lyrics, but I mean, you know, music. Because I find that the memory can... Uh, serve as well as an instrument, you know, once you know. I mean, if I could actually write, you know, write fairly complicated music, or, or at least write down the music that I'm playing, if I, if I had that ability to, to put down on paper uh, and to read it back again, um, then, I, then I suppose I could write all the time. Ian, how does one of your sensitivities and sensibilities cope with the energy output you put into performance every time Jethro Tull perform? You're saying you're not an actor, therefore it's got to be real when you're doing it. Yeah, but uh, it's like... Uh, I remember reading something that, that Jackie Stewart once wrote about having sort of heightened sensitivity, heightened awareness while he was actually racing, and I felt a lot of sympathy with that because I feel more or less the same uh, on stage that... Um, Regardless of the degree of physical energy, you know, mm. regardless of the output, um, it doesn't, uh, far from hampering your ability to concentrate or become involved with something, it very often um, seems to increase, perhaps not, uh, it, it increases the awareness anyway, the sensitivity towards actually what you're doing at the time you're doing it. Uh, and also in terms of colour and taste and smell and so on. I mean, I, you know, I, I know sometimes when I 
dive to the piano for a drink of water in between verses or something. And uh, if that water a little bit off, I mean, I've, I've taken a drink of water and just had to spit the whole lot out, you know, straight away because it tasted so bad. You know, almost as, and yet I'd tried that water because I, I do test the water <laughs> before I go on stage in places like New Orleans or in Paris or in uh, Italy. I mean, some of it's undrinkable. I mean, it's actually bad stuff, you know. You'd be sick if you drank as much water as I have to drink during a show to replace what I lose in sweat. So I do test the water, and having tested it and found it okay to drink, you know, in small quantities when you're naturally calmed and metabolism is obviously running at a slower rate, uh, having gone on stage and speeded up and become that much more sensitive to things, it just tastes foul. You know, so foul that you just involuntarily just spew a lot out, you know. Can't possibly take it. The same thing applies to having someone touch me. If, if uh, at the point of coming off stage, if some bouncer or a security guard unnecessarily tries to assist me from the stage or, you know, uh, protect me from what he thinks are sort of raging fans or something, I mean, you know, it's all rubbish because nobody ever really comes near you. But I mean, sometimes somebody gets hold of you, you know, to help you down the steps or something. I mean, that just is like having an electric shock go through you. Have someone just go like that on your arm is uh, is awful. It just freezes me like that, you know. And if uh, I mean, I, I've really got angry with, you know, almost sort of had fights with people who've done that because my it's almost like being hit on the back of the head from behind. You know, your instant your uh, initial reaction is to turn around and, and hit back. You know, and that's how I feel if somebody ever just goes like that to me, you know, at a time so close to having been on stage.